I'm Jeff Vidal and uh, I am one of the very few Navy involved with Nine Squadron in Vietnam and other Air Force helicopter things. The vivid memories as I get older, they, they sort of come into focus a bit. Um, I was um, a student at the Naval College at Jarvis Bay joining in 1964 when I was 15. And after a couple of years at the Naval College, I was asked to consider aviation because at that stage, the Australian Navy was thinking that they were about to get two new aircraft carriers to replace the Sydney and the Melbourne, and they needed lots of aircrew. So the Navy started a very big program of aircrew training in 1966. And in March 1966, I began uh, flying training through the Australian system at RAF Point Cook, and then over at RAF Pierce, flying wind jewels and vampires. And um, that was uh, a, a really early start for me because I was only not quite 17 and a half when I started pilot training. And that put me a little bit younger than uh, the Navy would really allow. <laughs> they were meant to be seven and a half in the Navy and 18 was the minimum age in the Air Force. So I found myself on pilot's course with uh, a number of people who were a fair bit older than me. And that's sort of the way it stayed. Uh, when I completed pilot's course in the middle of 1967, I went to Nara, the big Navy air station, to convert onto helicopters. And at that time, in the middle of 1967, the Navy uh, began to uh, prepare for going to Vietnam in a special unit with the American Army. And so over the next four years, from October 67, there were four contingents of Australian Navy uh, aviators went to Vietnam and served in a joint unit with the US Army. And uh, that took place as I was in them, or the, the training of the first team took place when I was converting to helicopters. And about the same time they went to Vietnam in 67, the, uh, the Navy announced that they were going to assist RAAF 9 Squadron by providing a once-only contingent of eight pilots. That was made, of, made possible because the Navy had this big system going of building up extra pilots. The Air Force had not increased its number of pilot trainees at all but the build-up in Vietnam was taking place quickly and the Air Force was caught off guard a little bit by the number of helicopter people they needed fairly quickly. And so the request was made to the Navy to provide eight pilots. And I just happened to be one of them. A sort of Goldilocks sort of situation where I was just in the right place at the right time. And so, um, I began training with the Australian Air Force as soon as I had finished my helicopter conversion. I went across to Canberra to Five Squadron where the RWF was preparing people to go to Vietnam in very early January of 1968 and did the operational training the Air Force was doing uh, for Vietnam. At that stage, I was alongside several of the other pilots from my pilot's course that had been posted to Air Force helicopter conversions and were again sort of expecting that down the track they would go to Vietnam. Uh, I did the, uh, the exercises up at Shoalwater Bay with the, the Army, the way the Army and Air Force were preparing uh, new people to go to Vietnam. And I was on a 707 to Vietnam in the middle of March of 1968, when I was only 19 and five months old. <laughs> and 
it uh, again just happened to be a very fortunate situation for me because the the Air Force in Vietnam starting to build up they had plans to increase the number of aircraft from 8 to 16 they had plans to upgrade the initial 8 to bigger helicopters from the UH-1B to the UH-1H and uh, and I lobbed into Nine Squadron Vietnam as this was about to take place with um, a whole lot of the earlier Air Force people about to go home and the, the rest of the Navy contingent, I was one of the first few because the eight loaned to the Air Force was staggered in their arrival. So uh, I was the second one over there and uh, all of a sudden, because I was at the right place at the right time, uh, the need for helicopter captains uh, meant that I had sort of moved through the co-piloting training stage in Vietnam fairly quickly. And, uh, and that put me in a, a really amazing situation as a young 19 year old flying as an aircraft captain um, months before the first of the Air Force people that had trained with me from early 66 before they got to Vietnam. The, the very first of the Air Force people on my pilot's course arrived at Nine Squadron in I think June or maybe July of 68 when I'd already been there for three months. And as the numbers in Nine Squadron built up fairly quickly the need to hurry people through to aircraft captaincy stage decreased. And so there I was incredibly fortunate that I had arrived and become an aircraft captain where the, uh, the other people that had been on a pilot's course with the Air Force were much further behind. And the, the rest of the Navy contingent also was a little bit behind. And um, and so I spent most of my time in Vietnam in that role as an aircraft captain uh, where others spent a fair bit of their time as, as co-pilots. We were totally integrated into Nine Squadron and um, it, it was a great advantage for me to have been not long before through the Air Force training system uh, I'm sure the grapevine would have provided information that uh, flying instructors uh, through Point Cook and Pierce would have talked to um, the helicopter um, whiz kids in, in, in Nine Squadron and Five Squadron and given verbal reports, if not passed on written reports about our flying progress through, through training. And so, uh, yeah, it was almost like, you know, uh, there wasn't a great, great problem. I wore Navy insignia on my flying suit, but it was the same flying suit as the Air Force. Uh, and, and, and we were really uh, doing the same thing. There was a problem for four of the other, uh, in fact, actually five of the other eight Navy people in that in this build up of Navy um, in a hurry, the, the, uh, the Navy sent quite a number of people over to train in America. They were trained at uh, Pensacola in Florida and they were unknown to the Air Force. I, I was a known quantity and, and the training that I had done at Point Cook and Pierce was well known to the Air Force. But the Air Force had a, um, a bit of a question mark about what did these guys do in America? How, how can we be confident about their flying training? And so a bit of a double whammy for the other Navy people in that they were um, not welcomed quite as well as I was in that uh, there was this hesitancy to accept how well they had been trained in America. And of course they arrived at this later time, in the middle of 68, when the need to rush through aircraft captaincy had sort of died down a little bit. 
And so even the other Navy guys took a long time to become aircraft captains.